so um it's 4 41 a.m <clears throat> and this car came out of nowhere and what kind of popping sound was that i don't know if, if i wouldn't i don't know if to say if that was a gunshot or what But that's creepy, that car being right there. Like, pretending to fake monitor me. After I just exposed the, um, the cab company. I mean, I'm sitting here minding my business, and I look up. And here's the pretend gangs. Come on, stop. The pretend babysitter. The gang stalking babysitter. And y'all be the first and the same ones who falsely say I'm crazy that I'm a danger on the road and I'm not mentally capable of driving a car and everything while y'all freaking go illegally going about y'all criminal lives. Like, what the hell y'all doing? Come on, man. Finally, you pull off. I mean, yeah, I tried to give it a, I mean, I tried to give the job a chance because I didn't want for people to think that, oh, you're such a loser or, oh, you quit already. <clears throat> but, you know, I, I felt like it troubled my spirit. I feel like, nah, I can't continue with the job. It, with, yeah, I mean. It's like, as, I mean, even though, I mean, I thought it was just independent drivers gang stalking me. Well, the work, the job I just tried to work, it was called Lucky Cab. I'm going to call it fake ass unlucky cab. But, you know, um, yeah, I don't feel right in my spirit to continue to, um, to work for them if, Almost all their <clears throat> vehicles participate in, I mean, all the vehicles are equipped, like, you know, gang stalking and stuff. So, um, I figured that that was a setup, you, you know, for them to put me in a vehicle. And then, the as I was trying to say, the first night, the guy... One, one of the dispatchers told me that he was aware of what he wanted to say was a broken tail light or whatever that a work order was put in but like how y'all got so many so many vehicles with um with messed up headlights and tail lights come on man it's almost five o'clock in the morning why is there noise and traffic? So, um, so, I mean, I, I mean, I, I was trying to stick with the job, but it's like, yeah, after a day or two, then I, you know, I thought about it. I thought about it, you know, and then I wasn't feeling good in the direct, I mean, the gang stalking network hit me with direct energy weapons, so I couldn't perform. And um, I tried the best I could, but, you know, I felt like in my conscience, I felt like I couldn't try to continue, you know, I'm just not even going to say nothing. I mean, I mean, nothing else really, you know, <clears throat> I mean to say, um, you know, I figured that they <clears throat> gave me such vehicles on purpose knowingly 
you know, because even the second vehicle, I didn't realize it till it was, I mean, after I got tired and then um, had to turn the, I mean, to go get gas in the, in the, in the vehicle. And that had like a strange headlights. So the day I did the training with the guy, Jeff, um, it was last week, probably, yeah, last week. There was a perp in 913, <clears throat> I think it was September 8th. And the moment I got in the car to train with Mr. Jeff, the car and I mean the cab in 913 pulled off with one headlight right and um I, I remember seeing it was a black guy and then <clears throat> the guy that remember uh, that guy that um that the other guy named Sean that trained me you know, I hadn't, that was the first time doing some actual road driving, you know, in a while. And he's like, you can't be nervous now. You know, you can't be freaking out now. Rather than, you know, giving some encouragement or, you know, help me feel more at ease, you know. And so I figured he was a dog on perp too because he would, um, <coughs> I would ask questions and he would give me a response that did not answer, that did not accurately answer my certain questions I had, you know, and then get an attitude. So, um, <clears throat> so then, <clears throat> um, I mean, also Sunday, I was walking here on Palafox, and I thought that it said 913, but it could have, I thought I remember it being a Toyota Prius, but number 913 is a Toyota Corolla, and that's, oh, number 913, that's also the car that the Sean guy trained me on for me to, me to do hands-on driving and training, you know, <clears throat> and so... You know, after a while, I started to feel more calm, you know, and more relaxed. But um, I try to stick it out because me trying to be independent, trying to get a job, trying to get out of homelessness, trying to get out of my situation. You know, um, I just. Sorry, y'all, you know. <clears throat> so, I mean. That was an independent. I mean, I thought that the 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 gang stalking activity from the drivers from this company um, earlier this year, I thought it was just those independent drivers. You know, I, I thought it was just those independent drivers, not the whole damn company. But it's like if all y'all doggone, not all of them, but you know, a lot of y'all vehicles, you know, participate in perping and stuff. You know, I don't want no part of it. So when I went to train with the Sean guy, I mean, because I do remember, I, I didn't remember, I just remember it was a black car. Um, The instant that I got in the car to train when Mr. Jeff was driving in his personal vehicle and showing me, you know, showing me around and we went all day that day. Well, actually, from like about eleven thirty in the morning till seven something in the evening, or almost seven o'clock, and me sitting there telling everybody, "Oh, I got a new job. I got a cab driving job, whatever." And um, yeah, now I feel embarrassed, you know. And so people might be like, "Oh, you quit that fast?" Or they'll be they'll be like. Oh, if you if you um can't keep a job, then obviously it's you who's the problem. Well, it's like I I wish in person that I could tell people the freaking truth, the 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 real truth. But you know, they they might be covert gang stalkers pretending that they have pretending like they have no knowledge of gang stalking. 
you know, so, um, like, when I went to get in the cab with Mr. Jeff in his personal cab, um, that instant I saw what looked like number 913, but I thought it was a Toyota Prius, but it was the, um, toy, it had that been Corolla, but I remember it was a black guy, one headlight, and 913. And they, they used the same vehicle to, um, train me in but when I when, when I went tra- doing to do the training that day um they had I looked and they had the proper headlights on that 913 and also um I remember seeing 913 but I thought it, again I thought it was a Toyota Prius but it was I must have been the Toyota Corolla and Sunday one of the cab drivers um, a black guy had his, and I don't remember if it was a Toyota Prius or 901 or something like that. And also 901 or 913, whoever was driving Sunday at approximately somewhere between noon and one o'clock and had his left arm hanging out the window. And I think I might have some footage of that or something, you know, footage of that too from, um, and I missed it because he was already way down the street. So, um, yeah, I mean, the instant I got in the, in the car, I mean, in the um, suburban to train with Mr. Jeff, that's when a black male perp with one headlight, and I think it was car number 913, and he drove off, like, after we got the, after there was a confirma- confirmation that me and Mr. Jeff got the vehicle to start off to go train with him driving, you know. So, um, and I'm wondering how or why did not Mr. Jeff not see that? But I was too embarrassed to say something because I knew it was the gang stalking, you know. But I thought it was just the independent, the I mean, the individual drivers themselves. I didn't realize this this company issues out vehicles with messed up headlights and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think they all, you, you know, knew what they were doing. But, um, so, I don't know, this might be in God's plan for me to just not work for this company. But damn, it's a, a freaking struggle to, um, you know, because I, I, I mean, I didn't really overlook it. I took note of it the first night, but the second night I didn't say anything because I'm like, wow, I know they, they gave me, you know, the Cadillac or whatever, messed up headlights on purpose, you know. <clears throat> so me being just determined to try to get a job and now I'm feeling like with my conscience you know I thought that maybe the third day that they wouldn't have messed up hair lights but I figured they did this on purpose you know so it took me a while to catch on you know so so um Oh, well. And as I said, people will be like, well, oh, you getting fired from these jobs or you quitting all these jobs or whatever. Oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, obviously you're the problem. But no, I'm not. So Liberty First Taxi, Um, when I went to this place the other day Liberty First Taxi I mean yesterday Liberty First Taxi when I got out of the Uber to go and eat Liberty I couldn't um, you know I wait, waited for the Uber to leave but I took note of it Liberty First Taxi um, gang stalker gang stalked me and monitored me and pulled off Immediately after he got, he or she got the confirmation that, and it was uh, like, it looked like a, 
Raggedy Silver Navigator. Lincoln that Lincoln Navigator. And so when I got out of the Uber, that per when they got the confirmation that I got out of the Uber, they immediately pulled out, out of the place that where I was going to. So um I, all I was trying to do is you know, trying to get out of my situation. While I'm sitting here just thinking and thinking and thinking, this ain't right. This ain't right. You know, and then, at, I mean, that Hispanic lady, I think she had, was it cab number 907 or something? But it was like a gold Kia Sorento. And I don't know if she did that on purpose or if the company gave her a vehicle and she didn't know, or if she knew and manipulated the headlights, I don't know. And then she, um, I saw she drove off yesterday with one tail light, you know, one tail light out. And that's like, um, so yeah, I mean, like after the Avis job, I said, if I don't even want to deal with employment anymore working underneath anybody but then this i tried this job supposedly independent contractor and um also after i got hired and started to work now everybody wanted to everybody wanted to get hired on and work you know so i thought it come on stop I thought that I thought that they always need drivers. And guess what? Pensacola Taxi, when I was working at Avis, Pensacola Taxi and Liberty First Taxi and a few other taxi companies, smaller taxi companies, they um gangs the drivers were gang stalking me at the airport when they were waiting to pick up passengers. So it's like gang stalking is a typical side hustle. For people who are already doing cab driving or even Uber and stuff like Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and all that. So gang stalking is a freaking side hustle on top of what what you're already doing. And so right when I had the bus incident the day before yesterday, they had three Z trip, at least three or four Z trip drivers drove near me the instant I got off the bus and started filming. If y'all go back and look at that video. Um, and so Z Trip was, I mean, I kept on trying to get hired on with Z Trip since I, May 2019. I came here April 30th, 2019. I moved to Pensacola. And then, you know, within like a week or two, I tried to get a cab driving job. You know, that was one of the first things I tried to get was like a Z trip job. And the Tracy guy, Tracy Boyd, kept skirting around and, you know, I kept trying. And, you know, he tried to look. I mean, I even took the courses last year when I was working at the schools. And getting up on a Saturday and go being dedicated to get up on a Saturday and go to the library and go on use their computers to, to um, take the test. And so um, then, you know, I was being gang stalked and harassed online by J.D. Manrot and shit and all of them, you know, when I had to buy me a coffee, you know, website, web page and stuff like that. So I'm um, talking about, oh, I'm going to find the library. And they actually found the library that I was at. Or they actually found out what motel I was staying at, found out where I shop at, found out the schools I was working at, even not, though I try to be discreet and hide, you know. But as I said, they probably already figured out where I worked at, where I was trying to work at this week. And, yeah, I mean, I, I'm saying that me – realizing that hey like this can't be a coincidence they're doing this on purpose so I figure my conscience is nagged and it's like I feel like you know 
as much as I wanted to try to have a job and try to gain independence and get out of my homeless situation. I at least freaking tried on my end. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't want to be working amongst, I mean, working, you know, for a corrupt company or whatever. And so, you know, with the gang stalking, they keep me sleep deprived. They hit me with directed energy weapons. They stalk, follow, and harass me. They sabotage and ruin everything. And so, um, I, I'm basically tired of panhandling and tired of, um, you know, I never did really did like panhandling anyway. I always wanted to be independent and work and stuff. So, <clears throat> I'm, they're going to be real mad at me, but oh well. Um, but Z-Trip drivers also have, like say for example, you have a driver that has cab number 1733 for Z-Trip that follow me around with one headlight, like, for example. You know, I've had that happen a while back. And Z-Trip drivers, I mean, that as I said, the Tracy guy, they, they said that they needed people really bad, especially in Mobile, Alabama. They said that they needed them more in Alabama than they needed them here in Pensacola. And they got a lot of drivers here in Pensacola more than Mobile, Alabama. And I heard that Tracy guy, he runs both companies. I mean, both locations in Z-Trip and both Mobile. That's what I was told, that he ran both Mobile, Alabama, and Pensacola, Florida. So, um, you know, I wanted to wait until I was well, well rested to, um, to try to get to work again and drive again. <clears throat> and they, the gang stalkers sabotaging me. But I felt like it was a miracle that I didn't get into any car accident or didn't get pulled over and stuff like that. You know, and I would just start it back out, you know. But I don't even know if they did that to me to try to groom me to become a perp, you know. Because as I said, I didn't realize until after I was driving for some time. And I turned around and wait. And, I mean, when I went and dropped, I mean, I had a customer pick up medications from, um, the pharmacy then that's when later on I noticed that one headlight out and I notified the dispatcher lady immediately you know so um and my head still kind of hurts right now you know but I'm just sitting here trying to survive, trying to make a living and trying to better myself. And the gang stalkers keep suppressing me. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that, you know, I didn't crash. I didn't get pulled over, you know. And certain customers helped me feel more confidence and encouragement. And others, you know, try to make me feel scared. So, the day before yesterday, after the bus incident, they had a guy, he's from New Orleans, I'm not going to say too much, That's, he, he was one of the cab drivers that picked me up, and he made it like as if he got my back or whatever, and he's supposedly from New Orleans like me, from what he told me, you know, and then the moment he was telling me about this one address, and this one mint color trailer or whatever then that was the remember the perp that I told y'all that looked like Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony and he's 25 years old and he had me drop him off I mean go through the McDonald's drive through and then drop him off by um, Waterfront Mission well that was my first trip the day before yesterday so like how the hell me out of all places how the hell was that that exact house the first house to go to? I mean, the first house called out to me. Right after that guy just told me about that exact house. 
I mean, after the other driver told me about that, that exact house, and then I was to, that was the first assignment to go pick up that um the guy the perp who looks like Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. And um, also one thing I forgot to mention: Why the hell would you train me on a cab car? That Toyota Corolla that's number nine thirteen. The um the back window was kind of messed up, so I couldn't even see clearly out of the back window. I I, I couldn't see clearly out out of the back window. You know. So I mean, some of the drivers are perps, and I don't know everybody, you know, but I think it wasn't. Jennifer that says she's the general manager. I think she was the one who was supposed to hire me and I didn't really hear much or nothing back, but I had to take it, uh, initiative to go myself. And after, I mean, after my phone got, um, lost and damaged and I had to get another phone. And, but when I applied, um, I guess around August 13th or somewhere around there, um, it was sometime in August. And uh, and when I went to apply there and fill out the application at Lucky Cab, I think it was Jennifer who was, you know, tell I mean who I filled the application out with. And I remember she pointed at the paper somewhere on the application. She pointed out at the paper with with double horn hand signs. I'm like, oh shit, she's a dog on perp. Um. So yeah, these people try to talk and act like they're normal everyday people and stuff like that. You know. I mean, so it's like I feel bad to have to go be back at square one and back to um I mean, I can't even go and tell you know, people in per in person, you know, cuz they'll they'll already, you know, targeted individual you already seen by society as the problem because a lie is made up about you when you expose stuff like this and then they got the freaking smear campaigns to ruin and destroy you you know but so dang because I, I want really wanted to try to better myself I hate taking the freaking buses and so I mean I haven't been making any money from writing and um I have not been making any money from writing but um you know I wish I could, I mean but they're keeping me sleep deprived on purpose yeah right when I try to start to better myself and try to start to get a job and stuff and then they do that on purpose like which y'all saw the O'Reilly's perps and then the guy from the other night in the wheelchair that um I didn't get to, I mean I I didn't even get to catch him. I I mean I talked about it the aftermath of what happened. I mean after he did what he did, cause he was already rode through here, and I caught him at the last minute riding through here pretending to be. I mean and that made me mad. Like, at some 3 o'clock in the morning, like, you freaking harassing me at 3 o'clock in the morning to keep me startled and stuff like that. So, um, it's best I freaking part ways. And, you know, just, some people say just rely on God, you know. But at the same time, people be like, well, closed mouths don't get fed and this and that, whatever, you know. But I have to, we have to deal with abuse every freaking day with panhandling and rejection and stuff like that. And as I said, I'd be lucky if I get ten dollars in one day. But the guy from New Orleans that was the cab driver, he said that you know basically able-bodied male homeless panhandlers get over a hundred dollars a day just standing at the corners and stuff. You know, standing on the standing at street corners and stuff. 
so holding up a sign. I've tried that and get ignored for eight hours. I would hold up a sign and get ignored for eight hours. Nobody paid want to pay attention to me. So yes, I mean it's freaking rough. It's so hard out here. And I'm just trying to do the right thing, trying to survive honestly. I do not want to sell my soul. I do not want to sell out. I'm just, you know, and I, I don't want to be associ associated with any corrupt criminal companies. So I guess I'll just try to stick with my writing, even if y'all think it's bad, you know. I mean, just like with the driving, you know, with my writing, my my um performance isn't that great when the gang stalkers want to force sleep deprive me. You know, especially when you, they see me in an effort to try to improve and better myself independently. They're like, oh, no, we can't have that. So they want to keep me suppressed and forced to be dependent and needy. So that they can keep maintain control, illegal control over me. So I'm going, I, I'm going to get in some big trouble. But what the hell, what I got to lose?